Chris Tordrak left, going to be playing this Lugia V-Star with the amazing rare Evital and Grant Manley on the Lost Box. But of course, uh, that interesting Kyogre as the elite tech card of choice. Really a, a, an incredible finisher if it has an opportunity. And a lot of the resources in this deck actually are featured around it with the uh, the Energy Recycler, which isn't in many lists, now being a two of inclusion here to try to pull off this big knockout. Yeah, that Energy Recycler really helps that Kyogre maximize its potential. But in order to do so, you do need to have your deck pretty empty, almost basically at zero cards and it's probably your last resort to close out the game so Grant will need to thin his deck pretty quickly through Colrus experiment through flower selecting in order to be able to get to that big Kyogre attack and he'll also have to make sure that there's no mana in play to use it. Well to get to this point Tord Reklov had to take out Sander who had a very strong matchup against him and sure enough Tord was able to pull it out uh, time getting the best of him, but here we are now ready to look at these hands and see which player is ready to maybe give themselves an advantage, not just yet, both players with a mulligan here. Yeah, both players didn't know at this point what they were up against now, they surely do, but given how it's been a long day one and a long day two, I'm sure they're both very aware of each other's decks and perhaps what sort of tech cards they have, I'm sure Grant at this point knows that Tord is playing that mana fee. Tord probably very aware of the Kyogre threat, so the timing of the mana fee will have to be impeccable for him to pull out this win. Absolutely, we've noticed that uh, with many players. We've noticed even us watching on the stream, when do you place down that mana fee? It's so crucial to blocking uh, big multi-prize knockouts at certain stages of the game, but if you play it too early, then Sableye just clears it up. So. How do you decide to pick that point? And uh, speaking of uh, the previous match, Tor did have to go through Sander, the player that brought this hyper anti Lugia deck, and he was able to pull off that win. Um, everyone's wondering how. I was able to watch uh, quite a bit of game two and the end of game one, and to be honest, it was pretty standard. I mean, Tord did what his deck needed to do, which was attack and apply pressure as much as possible. And Sander was able to deny all the resources in game one, but not enough in game two. And then in sudden death, Sander unfortunately had very little chance. Yeah, I, I watched the, the rest of uh, game three and the time was called and the game ended. <laughs> so I don't have much to rely back. Yeah, that's, that's a problem with those sort of decks, right? But this time around in this top four, we have these two very aggressive decks. I think we're off to some, we're going to be able to watch some very dynamic, very back and forth um, games. And with both players, I feel like it's going to be hard to predict who's going to win. Even if one player falls behind, we've seen comebacks made from both of these sort of decks. Absolutely. Uh, there is a potential here for Grant to consider himself a favorite in the matchup. Of course, playing so many Lugias to get to this point toward going through so many mirror matches and now facing off against something that could be a, a little more unknown. Of course, Tord has seen this deck time and time again, but perhaps not exactly with the uh, the Kyogre in the list. Not sure if uh, he played against anybody like uh, Azul in the, the rest of the tournament, as Azul was certainly doing fantastic and I believe was able to finish in the top 16. Now, the big thing I think here for Tord is the fact that the mana fee is currently priced, but I wasn't even going to mention that. I was going to mention that there's no Dawnsparce in the list, so the Raikou V will also be wrecking havoc on Tord if Grant can pull that off consistently. Yeah, this is starting to look in the favor of Grant, of course. Don't ever call Tord the underdog. <laughs> he, uh, he, he thrives on that and uh, certainly could use that to his advantage. Very excited to see these players get this game underway here and see who will be playing on this stage tomorrow in the championship. So we'll get this game started. And I did also notice that second energy recycler for Grant in the prize cards. And we did see that card almost costing him in the previous match that we streamed him at. So we'll have to see if that factors into this game. But seems like Tord will be leading us off. And with that beautiful double Archeops discard from the Ultra Wall, can't really ask for much more. Going first, Lugia active, two Archeops in the discard pile. You really don't need much else. 
Yeah, this is phenomenal. You can't draw it up any better to have the Arceus already in hand, uh, Archeops already in hand. You just uh, discard those immediately. Get to see some additional resources. And we will see the strategy of choice here from Tord now. Uh, do you go for that second Lugia and value the consistency? Or uh, maybe do you go for one of your favorite cards there in that uh, Aranguru and try to, try to work in uh, some nice draws to have a really clean turn too? Indeed, all of those are really good options. But Tord opting to go for the Lugia V-Star, probably knowing previously that uh, there's a very little to no chance of his hands getting Marnie throughout the game, maybe not even Rook's hand, and that wouldn't even factor in in Grant's turn number one. So guaranteeing that Lugia V-Star towards really not missing anything from his setup. Is there even a universe where he can keep his bench low enough where Raikou can take a KO past that V-Guard energy? I think there might be a chance. We see Tord eyeing up that Stoutland V moving up into the front of the search there. Just checking in to see if that is going to be available. Double dip fangs can certainly be a very strong attack in a matchup like this. So many low hit point basic Pokemon in this deck and with the uh, advantage of using those powerful energies and a multitude of them, of course, uh, could be taking multiple prize cards. Yeah, that Southland V could be very problematic for Grant. I was talking to him earlier and he did say that any Lugia deck that does play Stoutland can be very problematic. He does have some answers to it, but they're not perfect. And that is the one card that he'd rather not be staring down right now. Well, not going to have to see it just yet as the second Lugia is grabbed off of the capture energy. Yeah, so delaying that Stoutland a little bit. Perhaps Grant doesn't necessarily know, but changing his mind going for that Oranguru. Yeah, I, I definitely see merit to this play. Just uh, establishing the Primate Wisdom as early as you can lets you see a lot of cards, and it also helps you uh, make sure that you're you're setting up exactly what you're looking for on the following turn. Perhaps uh, some of these special energy cards that you don't always want to see, you can get those uh, placed on the top of the deck, and if there ever is any shuffle that happens, uh, you have an opportunity to, to see that later when you're looking through the deck with Archeops. Now, of course, the energies are a lot more useful in the deck than in the discard pile for Tord. So putting those energies back, and he is holding a Quick Bolt, so um, at some point that could end up being very clutch to make sure that he's attaching the right energies at the right time with Archeops. All right, it is go time for Grant Manley. Going to start things off here with the Battle VIP Pass. Multiple Pokemon are likely to be searched out here. Have to think that cards like the Radiant Greninja, the Comfey, are uh, big targets here, liking uh, drawing as many cards as possible, but also starting to load up that Lost Zone. Indeed, he'll want to get those Flower Selecting as soon as possible. That Radiant Greninja will give him access to even more cards, so that will be pretty, pretty useful. I think the biggest um, hurdle for Grant to go through is can you find those Colrus's experiment quick enough? He doesn't have Luminion V. He doesn't have any sort of Poke Gear to try and dig through the deck. If he doesn't find one in his starting hand, then it's all down to concealed cards and flower selecting. Yep. On stream previously, Grant had a uh, a whirl of a time trying to get the uh, the, the Comfy to listen as it was not selecting the right flowers. Let's just say that. A uh, lot of terrible choices that had to be made there. And hopefully uh, Comfy is feeling a little more generous uh, in the holiday season, looking to find a Chorus's experiment soon. And there it is, at least with the Radiant Greninja's help. Yeah, certainly Radiant Greninja and Comfey making a very good pairing. We do see the Colrus experiment <gasps> fetching another Colrus oh, experiment, okay. so really good. And we did see Grant having some really awkward flower selectings in the previous time that he did get streamed. However, I think he navigated them perfectly. He knew exactly which cards to pick. He did have to think through the choices very carefully, but he ended up winning pretty convincingly the game. So I think he's very aware of uh, those tough choices. He knows his deck perfectly, and he knows how to navigate those situations. Definitely. Grant has been in this situation many a time, having to make difficult decisions. Comfy going to make this one maybe a little easier. Uh, seeing the choice belt and the battle VIP pass. Generally, when you see the battle VIP pass, it's turn two or three, and you're just throwing it away. We do see some Pokemon down, and 
you start to wonder if you need a, a couple more here to to keep this strong turn. Uh, seems like Grant values the choice belt a little more. Definitely wants to pump that damage from Raikou potentially, maybe um, the Kremrent hitting into the Lugia eventually as well, or even dealing with the Stoutland at some point. So very, um, what a choice, right? To have to send a Battle VIP pass on turn one in the loss zone when it's essentially the most important card you want. Yeah, I, I feel like I've done this a lot when I'm playing the uh, the Lost Box deck. Uh, Gompi and all of the other Pokemon that you draw into, eventually you just see so many of these basic Pokemon and you don't feel the need to play them down on your bench. You want to leave some bench spaces open. Don't want to overextend into uh, issues uh, with your opponent starting to deal extra damage. Of course, it's not exactly going to be happening from this side from Tord, but you like to have your surprises. And if you can draw all into those and keep them in your hand as opposed to uh, being forced to place them on your bench with the Battle VIP pass, then you're left with that element of surprise, which may be able to catch Tord a little off guard. Oh, most certainly, though. I don't think you could catch Tord off guard at this point. <laughs> He's in top four. This is his comfort zone, it feels like. And... Um, at this level of play, I think catching someone off guard is going to be very, very difficult. But Grant continuing to get cards into the Lost Zone. We'll have to see where he's at after this. And if he manages to um, not KO the Oranguru, but will ping it with the Spit Innocently, setting up for a future Sableye play, potentially knocking out Menafi and that Oranguru at some point. Yeah, that's a, a very strong line of play here. Uh, don't necessarily need to knock out the uh, the Orangaroo at this stage. Can't even do it anyways. But uh, to get this damage down in place, uh, that just leaves opportunities for Grant to take these prize cards later on down the road. Four in the loss zone means that Sableye uh, could be online in the next uh, two turns or so. We've seen it happen a little earlier sometimes with him uh, reaching that 10 card mark in two turns. But uh, it certainly can happen with this list. Now, something very peculiar about Grant's play the previous turn, he did bench that mana fee playing it extra, extra safe in case of a Raikou, but Tor does not, in fact, play that Raikou. So that is that really shows how, despite being down so many rounds, despite Tord arguably being one of the most watched players probably at the event, you can't always know. And that also shows the level of preparation and thought that goes through Grant's mind, he's trying to compensate for every possible little thing that could give Tord an advantage. Yeah, it could be argued that this Manaphy is a liability at this stage. The Stoutland V would uh, would love to only need two uh, powerful energies to get the job done here and uh, knock out one of those Pokemon for two prize cards. Yeah, and speaking of, there's this Stoutland V threatening the double dip fangs. It will take a lot to knock out this Cramorant. It will require an investment of four powerful energies, but with Tord's knowledge of the deck, he might be comfortable doing that purely because a response onto a Stoutland is not easy to do, and we see the first two powerful energies getting powered up right here. Yeah, that's right. The uh, summoning star from the Lugia V-Star bringing these Archeops into play that were discarded on the first turn of the game. Now we see the Primal Turbos available to start to look for these special energy cards and see at least two of them now here for the Stoutland V. And that could really mean anything at this point. Uh, we haven't seen the supporter of choice for Tord. We also haven't seen the retreat available. So uh, still a few decisions left to be had. Ooh, Tord putting back that powerful energy is holding the double turbo to attach to Oranguru. So now he will use that second. Archibs get those extra powerful energies onto the Stoutland. So very properly sequenced by Tord, very clean play we are seeing from him, and uh, honestly, he couldn't ask for a better setup at this point. Yeah, the double dip fangs with the assistance of the plus 80 damage from the powerful energy is going to be enough for a knockout on the active Pokemon here for two prize guards, and as you were saying, the uh, the 210 hit points, that's, uh, that's pretty beefy. Indeed, especially for a deck such as Grant's that relies on uh, Kyogre, to be the big damage dealer and leads off with Cramorant or even Sableye or Raging for Ninja with that little bit of chip damage setting up future KOs here and there. But how does Grant deal with this Stoutland? Is Raikou a possibility? With the other Colrez that he was able to keep from the initial Colrez, he could end up activating that Mirage Gate and taking a return KO that way. 
Yeah, we'll have to see if Grant has the cards available. Uh, with the Mirage Gate in the Law Zone, you have to think that certainly the reach could be there. Uh, but this turn is all about Tor Direklev. Some excellent sequencing as we saw that powerful energy available due to the Oranguru. And now uh, with this nice big hand from the professor's research has plenty of options as he goes in for this double prize knockout with the double dip fangs. Yeah, that double prize knockout could be very key here. Of course, Grant relies on having an advantage by using single prize attackers, but Double Dip Fangs compensates for that disadvantage that Hort might have had. And now the next issue comes down to if Raikou is the response here onto Stoutland, will Stoutland trade it pretty evenly, right? Two prizes, four two prizes, and then it's on toward to knock out the Raikou and take another two prizes. So it does apply a lot of pressure to Grant. And there aren't a lot of great targets for the Kyogre to clean up the game for Grant. So we'll have to see if he can factor and compensate for the Stoutland at this given time. Yeah, the, the, the pressure that this Stoutland brings and uh, requiring this response so early, it just means that Grant is going to likely have to leave those two prize cards of the Raikou V uh, left for Tord, which should be fairly easy to clean up at this point in the game. And uh, Grant would rather play a little bit of a slower game. He wants to allow single prize knockouts, buy a lot of time, use these cards like the Sableye, start to spread some damage around, and then you can set up this really clean knockout with the Kyogre, and it doesn't look like he's going to have enough time to set up anything like that, and that's, that's not a spot you want to be in. Yeah, absolutely. This, um, this Toutland is very threatening, and this is another of those cards that had never seen any sort of play before uh, Lugia appeared in the metagame, and all of a sudden, it's about to take Tord Reklev into the finals, potentially. So really interesting how these brand new cards really get the most potential out of these older cards. Well, looks like we have plenty of cards in the loss zone here for Grant, up to eight now. So certainly Mirage Gate activated a little bit off for the Sableye, but may not be what we're thinking about at this stage. Have to remove this Stoutland V from play or else that's going to be two more prize cards very easily for Tord. And Grant, if his response ends up being Raikou, then um, Tord could respond with Lugia, and the Ordinary Rod that Grant had to send to the Lost Zone um, unfortunately would make, it to get, would make it very difficult for Raikou V to be able to get a return KO on the Lugia as well. And if that was the response, then Tord would only require to would only be required to take out that final Raikou to close out the game. So Grant in the backseat, he'll have to figure out a different way to respond to the Lugia if he wants to win this yep. match. But we don't see Manaphy out yet for Tord. So either it's impeccable timing or he won't be able to access it from his prize cards and the Kyogre will wreak havoc here as well. Well, here uh, comes the Mirage Gate, as this is going to start allowing some of these energies to be accelerated onto these Pokemon here. Kofi going to be a beneficiary as uh, another energy goes to the Raikou. Have to be thinking that the Lightning Energy is already in the hand here to have the opportunity to attack with this Raikou V. Also can't forget about the Fleet Footed to draw an additional card when it reaches the active, and I think we're just a couple bench spaces off from a knockout here. Oh, Choice Belt, you know, that helps too. Yeah, with that Choice Belt, Raikou is now dealing, I believe, 90, 190, it might be 210 exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a plus 20 effect, so you just act, act like there's an additional, so this should be the, the 210 for the knockout here. Right, 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 yeah, it's the 8 bench Pokemon plus the base 20, but well, let's add a few more. <laughs> makes it easier for us, <laughs> just decides to bench everything up and takes that KO on the Raikou. Tor does need to double check the math, <laughs> just making sure that we're all good here. And Grant eliminates that Stoutland from play. So how does Tord respond to, respond to this? He does have the possibility to take down that Raikou very cleanly with the Lugi attack. He could also end up using Radiant Charizard at some point, but I feel like if you establish the Lugia and you establish the Radiant Charizard on the bench, then he'll be able to deal with anything that Grant throws at him. Yeah, I think 
uh, making use of the high hit points that you currently have has been a strategy that's been very strong for Tord, especially knowing some of that information, as you were mentioning earlier, with that ordinary rod. So uh, the Lugia V-Star does start to make sense. Uh, there, there is merit to starting to make use of your single prize Pokemon, but uh, at any case, if you want to knock out this Lugia V-Star, it's probably going to have to be a Raikou once more. Yeah, there's no other way for Grant to deal that big, big damage other than the Kyogre, but given how early we are in this game, how many cards Grant has left in his deck, pulling off that Kyogre seems basically impossible at this stage. So how could he deal with this? And if he takes that risk, I mean, his only option might be to go for the Raikou, right? And if he doesn't use the Raikou, he ends up losing the game. And if he ends up using the Raikou, he might still lose the game, but there's no better way. Yeah, this, this isn't sounding ideal here, and uh, this hasn't been e exactly the, the strongest setup for Grant, even though he's been able to do what he wants. He's, he's, he's been looking and drawing all these cards. He found the Colrus' experiment, and he's had the answer to these Pokemon that Tord's bringing. They just, they just don't align very well with the strategy, and it's because of the pressure that the Stoughton put on. Just too many prize cards were going to be available, and Grant had to bring out this answer uh, earlier than he wanted. Indeed, this Raikou is a very good card against Lugia, but when you're going second, when you're behind, when that Stoutland has already gotten that very favorable price trade-off, the Raikou might not actually be enough. But I don't see what other Pokemon Grant could have used. He could definitely not afford to give up two more prizes to the Stoutland, and there was no purpose, nothing to set up at that point for him. So we'll have to see maybe... A ghosting play could have been good to trap something in the active. That's not possible because the Archives just attaches energies everywhere. Um, I'm sure Tord's aware of that, and Grant doesn't even have any bosses for orders. So we'll have to see what he's planning because um, even though we have extra time in this match and in top cut, rather, um, you have to know that Grant's deck is a little bit on the slower side of things to close out games because of the lower damage output from his Pokemon. Yeah, Grant typically winning games because of uh, the damage that's left on board. And right now, uh, just a little bit of damage on the Oranguru, not really going to be beneficial here. We do see the Marnie here from Tord going to fill the hand up to five now and leave Grant on a four card hand. And you have to think that Tord is hoping that this is enough to avoid a retaliation on this Lugia, as we do not see the Dunsparce currently. Yeah, no Dunsparce. For Tord, uh, there isn't one in his deck. I be Oh, there is a one, sorry. That's my bad. So that could be used to protect the Lugia from the Raikou. But Grant needs to stretch so much. Needs the Ordinary Rod, another Quick Ball, or potentially a Capture Energy, and another Mirage Gate to be able to take this KO. And it's going to be really, really difficult to pull off. Yeah, I think there's almost merit for Tord, even if he had the Dunsparce, just not to play it, because the, the Sable, I could just knock out that and the Oranguru, and then maybe these two prize cards from the Lugia could be found on a later turn. So uh, completely understandable here from Tord to just say, yeah, if you have it, you have it. And even then, I could just find Radiant Charizard and close things out. Yeah, and even though, like, if you go into this matchup knowing that you're up against Kyogre and that there's a Raikou, as you mentioned, like, you might be eager to bench those cards, but they can also be a liability, so it's very important to evaluate at what point you bench those cards, at what point you play them, and how valuable they actually are for you at any given point. All right, looking at Grant's hand, we do see uh, the Pokey Stop, which could be used to look and see some additional cards. Also comes with a little bit of a liability as you're only able to grab the item cards off of uh, the spin. And we do see plenty of the Mirage Gate in hand along with the Kyogre, but uh, it's not uh, a Pokemon that you need to be thinking about at this juncture. Only two energies left in the deck besides that capture energy that's hiding back there, and uh, that doesn't mean that uh, Kyogre's ready to go in at any time soon. Yeah, definitely not. The deck still has a lot of cards that do not benefit the Kyogre. It is forced to discard energies in order to maximize its damage potential. And Grant is very close to being able to attack with Sableye. The loss zone counter is at 9 right now. And he still needs one more to be able to attack with Sableye. You'd imagine knocking out the Oranguru is one of his available plays. But then what's the other 
play? What's the follow-up? Where does he place the damage? And how does he prevent Tord from taking two more prize cards in his next couple of turns? Yeah, you'd, you'd think that maybe the rest of the damage would just uh, try to work its way onto uh, an Archeops and a Lugia to a, a point that maybe a Kyogre could do something, but you're asking uh, so much of your deck. You need the Energy Recycler to be very generous uh, to, to pull off uh, that big attack there, and Tord is going to keep you on a clock. Yeah, there's also no Colors Experiment so far for Grant this turn, making it hard to thin the deck as much as you would like to. Getting, I believe, Lost Vacuum and Hizui and Heavy Ball off of that Flower Selecting. No switching card available for him just yet for that second Comfy. Um, does have energy to retreat, I believe, that Capture Energy. So should be able to get into the Sableye, but we see the Scoop of Met instead. Yep, Sableye ready to work its magic here. Lost Zone has 12. That means the Lost Mine is certainly activated, as it only requires 10. But you do get to place 12 damage counters. Uh, Rangaroo at least going to accept a few of those, and it looks like the rest will be placed on this Lugia V-Star. So uh, a potential to set up for a uh, three-prize knockout as we do see some damage also to the Archeops. Uh, it's, it's, it's there, I suppose. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot to ask uh, of your deck, though. Now, if I do recall correctly, uh, the mana fee was at the third and fourth price spot, and I do see it right there. So with the impeccable timing that we were talking about in the beginning of the game, Tord will be able to bench that mana fee, putting the Kyogre out of commission at least for one turn. And you have to imagine, if Tord takes a KO on this Sableye and is able to set up some sort of other attacker, then he'll be able to close out this game, even with potentially an Archeops, because Grant's Pokemon do not have a lot of HP. Yeah, the Speedwing will be enough to close out on many of these Pokemon here, even just having the energy down so that you could retreat to one of the stronger attackers. If for whatever reason a, a, a Raikou was able to come back into play, would be a, a strong choice here. Yeah, Tord still has the Radiant Charizard to respond to that Raikou, has Archeops to respond to a follow-up Sableye, but Grant needs a big attack to deal with this Lugia, presumably this Radiant Charizard, which begs the question, why thin specifically the Capture Energy? That is a way you can get that Radiant Charizard out of the, de out of the deck, sorry. So, I don't know, maybe he is holding a Quick Ball, so... He can also fetch it that way. I feel like Tord would really benefit from getting it out right now, establishing the threat and telling Rand, hey, I have two attackers. I'm down to one prize card. No matter which one you take out, I can close out the game with this. That's a, a great point. The capture energy often just seen as a uh, colorless effect at this point, just something to retreat with, uh, an energy that you just throw onto a bunch of Lugia at once when you're trying to preserve your powerful energies. But in this, uh, in this case, it would actually be a pretty welcome top deck later on. So uh, I do love that mention there as we see the knockout from the Lugia V-Star. And that will take Tord down to just one prize card remaining, Grant needing to have the turn of his life and that is a nice find with the Energy Recycler. That is indeed a nice find. Maybe there's something to do here, putting energies back, powering up your Pokemon, but without the Ordinary Rod to recover the Raikou, I don't see how Grant can pull this off, and he finds the Ordinary Rod off of the Flower Selecting. So if Tord didn't have a way to get the Radiant Charizard or didn't have an Aurora Energy available because there are three in play, then perhaps Grant can run with this game. Yep, we are going to see the Clara uh, assisting as well in this strategy. The Raikou is going to be uh, a choice as it has the most hit points, could hopefully assist in staying around for one more turn here. Yeah, with that Clara at Grant, did it not need that Ordinary Rod, so I got a little bit excited for no reason. <laughs> but um, there's the Raikou, will be able to at least potentially replenish the deck if he needed energies in order to power up through Mirage Gate. The residual damage from the Sableye will make it so that he, Raikou doesn't need a lot of basic uh, Pokemon down or bench Pokemon from either player to take the knockout on this Lugia. And it will come down to can Tord find boss plus 
power up the Archeops to KO one of those Comfes or the Manaphy on well, the bench. Or the, we'll the whole deck is gone here. The Energy Recycler is going to fill the deck all the way up, and we are going to see the Mirage Gate. As it makes you wonder if the, the Kyogre was almost a reachable play, but of course the Manaphy really shut that down. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Kyogre was reachable, but toward finding the Manaphy out of the prize cards at the perfect time. Otherwise, Grant might have been able to take those last three prize cards here. Yep, toward a robbing us of what we all wanted to see uh, for the benefit of potentially winning a top four game. Now we do see the Archeops promoted, the Luminion fetching that boss's orders, you have to assume, being able to knock out while pairing up with Primal Turbo. So Tord Reckliff takes game number one here against Grant, getting closer to that fourth LAIC trophy. Yes, that is something that is certainly on everyone's mind here. Can Tord take over the world? He's trying to uh, get to at least the championship stage here tomorrow, uh, where he's up against an incredible Italian player who was our 9-0 uh, at this event. Grant Manley working diligently to try to avoid that situation and keep playing tomorrow. He's going to have to likely avoid this Stoutland because that was a terrifying card to see on turn two. Yeah, absolutely. This um, Grant now will have the advantage going first. That means he will get the first damage off. But if you're doing 110 to a big Lugia or even Orangru, that's not enough to really close out the game. So we'll have to see if Grant plays this any differently. The Kyogre cannot be utilized earlier on at any given point. And if Tord can manage the Manaphy benching at the perfect time, then that Stoutland might run off with the game for Tord. If Grant had one more turn that previous game, he probably would have been able to close it out. But that Stoutland made sure that he didn't have that extra turn. Yeah, just takes that one additional prize and just having to play off the back foot. And that's a spot that Grant is unfamiliar with playing with because so often it's just single prize Pokemon here, single prize Pokemon there. and. Uh, you can make up the work with uh, a lot of assistance from that Sableye and eventually uh, closing out with the Kyogre. Yeah, and it's a combination of the Stoutland plus the Manaphy that is really hard for Grant to overcome, I'm sure. Throughout day one and day two, he's faced off against a bunch of different versions of Lugia, all of them including all sorts of different tech cards. But this specific combination of the Stoutland and the Manaphy seems to be the most difficult one to bypass. We see our players setting up here for game number two as we are going to take a look at the prize cards here. Suing Heavy Ball, that's that's not your job, but we are going to see uh, at least a, uh, the choice belt maybe uh, for some, some reach later on. We did see it potentially was used with the, the Raikou last time. And Boss's Order is in a nice spot there for Tord. One Archeops as well, so overall these are some pretty solid prize cards to work with. Yeah, both players having some very solid price cards, as you mentioned. They're not anything game-changing, nothing crucial is there for either player, so they should be able to play this game very smoothly with all their options available to do whatever they're intending on doing. Now we are going to see Grant start us off with this Battle VIP pass off the concealed cards from Radiant Greninja. Yeah, it looks like we, uh, we got a little head start here. And Grant Manley uh, getting some cards uh, placed into uh, the discard pile. Looks like the escape rope was potentially used there, and uh, the battle VIP pass is found and played. Going to grab the additional Comfey and, of course, the Cramorant, which loves to get an early attack off. Gonna have to wait until next turn, but uh, certainly would love to flood the Lost Zone here in this opening turn. Now, during round nine, I did see Grant pull off a turn to Sableye attack with 10 cards in the Lost Zone. So that would be very impressive to see here. But unfortunately, towards uh, Pokemon just have a little too much HP, even for Sableye to be useful that early on. But 10 cards in Lost Zone means Grant will have seen a lot of cards, gone through a lot of cards in the deck, and perhaps gotten close to that Kyogre play in case Manaphy isn't perfectly timed. Well, easy flower selecting there, Pokestop going away, Colrus's experiment added to the hand it looked like, and that is a capture energy to continue to take some cards out of the deck here. We see the Orangaroo placed, and that always means that you can uh, help yourself out for next turn, place a uh, 
card that you'd love to see later on on the top of your deck, and uh, maybe when you're not playing a card like that Call vs. Experiment this turn, you can just leave that for next turn. Uh, I want to note how Grant immediately attaches the capture, immediately searches for the Arangaroo, so if this shows that he's really planning ahead, you know? He's not playing a card, playing the capture energy, and then thinking, what is he going to grab from the capture energy? He already knows exactly what he's thinking to grab. He already goes for it. There's a lot of fluidity in his play, and I really, really like that. Yeah, once you've played against Lugia, uh, what, probably 12 times so far over the, the weekend, it's, it starts to, to feel like muscle memory at this point, but uh, we'll see if Tord has anything to say about that. The capture energy, energy to start things off here already has uh, the Lugia to start in the active spot, and going to take a look at uh, the cards in the deck so far, just get an understanding of what these prizes are. Probably going to be uh, excited to see that nothing too bad is missing. Indeed, putting the Oranguru at the very top, he will make note, as you mentioned, that Stoutland is there, Manaphy is there as well, and Tord, I feel, he's already he already has two Lugias in his hand already, so that means he doesn't have to worry about finding another one, that's why we're going for the Oranguru to make sure that we can maximize the value that Arcubes gets with the Primal Turbo, but there was a universe where if Tord somehow didn't get a second Lugia down, and Grant got to the seven cards in the Lost Zone and activated Mirage Gate to KO with Raikou, that could have been very problematic. Yeah, you don't, you don't often think about the Mirage Gate uh, aggression that this deck can bring, but it definitely is uh, an opportunity there for Grant to, to get very aggressive. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure Tord will factor that into the potential plays that Grant has, but there are there is a possibility that Grant, Tord could underestimate Grant's hand and Grant's reach into how many cards he could get in the loss zone. So in order to not clog up his bench, he could choose to not bench that second Lugia, but I think Tord will want to play it extra, extra, extra safe. I think we see two Lugia in the hand, so safety is his middle name. Yeah, safety and that beautiful starting hand, you know, like that's just the way he immediately drew the hand. I'm sure a lot of players we've seen struggle to get even one Lugia to start them off, and Tor just has three of them and the capture energy just in case. Well, maybe we need to have another conversation with Isaiah Bradner about consistency. <laughs> Indeed, because their group was playing three Lugias, right? And only two captures, so that's three less cards that will fetch you Lugia on turn one. Yep, we do see uh, Tord making use of that Oranguru play once more, where you uh, take one of those special energy cards in the hand, place that back into the deck, and then find a shuffling effect using the Evolution Incense to, to do just that, and hopefully making this top deck a little more live uh, in the future. There's a second Lugia being benched, playing extra, extra safe. Make sure that even if Grant was able to pull this off, he wouldn't be able to threaten towards single Lugia, and we do see the research. I only hadn't realized that after all of this, Tord had not played a supporter yet, gets the two Archipses in the discard file, and gets a fresh hand to work with. Yeah, I, I know players are high-fiving for Professor's research with uh, with no cards on the discard, but if it's two Archeops, that's, that's a double high-five at least. Yeah, absolutely. Double Archeops is what you want to see on turn one in your discard file. Tord will also be able to use Read the Wind to get a further three cards into his hand, debating on whether the Choice Belt, which is uh, fairly useless at this point, is a card to give up on, and that's exactly what we see. Yep, not serving toward very well there. Often uh, the knockout is fairly simple on the Raikou V, so not going to have to need that. And Grant now has that Colrus's experiment, as we saw from last turn. Is this decision going to be difficult? We see three energy in the, the Choice, so... We, we saw a few of these were able to be tossed away earlier on. Yeah, three energy, a Sableye, and the follow-up call risk. So definitely a tough decision here. It sends that Sableye to the Lost Zone, which he does play a second copy, and Sableye's uh, damage is not as impactful as you would like it to be in this matchup because the Pokemon just have so much HP from Tord. Well, here comes the Wiggles uh, as Grant tries to figure out what is going on here with the flower selecting. And it looks like a Colrus's experiment. He's 
going to be dropped. So whatever that other card was, was pretty good. It was Clara. So Clara being valued a lot in order to be able to get that Raikou back at some point. Get your attackers. Raikou is the Pokemon that Grant is relying on a lot. But he might not know that Tord is playing that Dawnspar. So whenever Tord decides to bench that, when he feels that, he needs to trade perfectly well with the Raikou. How does Grant deal with a big Lugia here? Yeah, we've noticed that uh, the high hit point Pokemon for Grant has been uh, pretty difficult. It is a, uh, a possibility to, of course, reach uh, the knockout on the Stoutland, as we saw last game. But if you're protecting the weakness of a Lugia V-Star, uh, that's, that's almost impossible to knock out in one turn. Yeah, with no weakness, no bench damage, that Lugia becomes a very big wall to go through for Grant. And even though Raikou does do a lot of damage, it does cap out at 220 with two field benches, and that is 60 short from knocking out the Lugia. Wall Zone has reached six so far, so one more to activate the Mirage Gate. When you see this Kompe come down, that probably means that Scoop Up Net eventually will be played this turn. You don't want to uh, leave the bench completely filled with all of these cards that aren't really uh, meant to be taking knockouts. Of course, the, the Cramorant could start to uh, see some play, but uh, there's a lot of other stronger cards. Now, Grant seems to be missing that Lightning Energy, so he will need to use another Flower Selecting in order to activate the Mirage Gate. He's also eyeing up, eyeing up that Escape Rope indeed and see what Tord commits to before choosing his own next play. There's a lot of mind games going on here. Tord must be thinking, does he have the Raikou? Can he actually knock out my Lugia this turn? Or can I just give up on the Oranguru? Yeah, the, the energy placement of the capture energy, uh, especially onto the active and then seeing the escape rope certainly makes you think, well, there's got to be at least a scoop up net or something going on here. So uh, whatever Pokemon will be promoted is likely not the Pokemon that Tord would see at the end of the turn. It looks like with all that information in mind, gonna just go ahead and leave the Lugia up. And as you mentioned, mm. that capture energy placement was pretty key. Could have given Tord a false sense of security. Now we know he does have the option for Raikou, but Grant's bench is full. He also had a very tough flower selecting, having to choose between the second Sableye and the Ordinary Rod. But Grant has a scoop up net to open up the bench space. He does find the switching card that might have been the card that Grant needed in order to be able to take this KO with Raikou right here. Yeah, these seven cards in the Lost Zone now uh, could potentially open up some plays here. Uh, it, it is certainly tricky here, but we are going to see that scoop up net played. Opening up the bench space, Grant just wants to make sure that no step is missed. And there is the Raikou along with the Mirage Gate. Indeed, I, this, this pause that we had was Grant figuring exactly what he needed to do in what order he needed to do. And once he was sure of exactly what he was doing, now we see the cards just going down a lot more fluid, although hesitating a little bit with the combination of energies, debating probably between the Psychic and the Water, as we see, choosing the Psychic, valuing the Water a lot more to be able to be attached into the Kyogre in case there's no access for Mana Fee eventually when he decides to attack with it. Yeah, also could be a nod to the fact that this Raikou could be being knocked out soon, and you want to know where that Psychic Energy is, and uh, having access to that by way of the Clara that was saved later on means that uh, maybe you get an additional Sableye attack that you weren't expecting. Yeah, Grant really put a lot of value into that Clara and into that Sableye, knowing that's his best way to remove a potential Dawnsparce from play or remove a potential Manami from play. And there's the first KO. Yeah, the uh, double prize knockout there on the Lugia V, of course. And uh, that means that Stoutland is probably not going to be uh, a great card here for Tord, unless he has a lot of resources to overextend past the Raikou. I think you almost want to just deal with the threat at this point, however. Yeah, absolutely. The way to use Stoutland would have to be through a boss's orders, and that will leave the Raikou available. And with the size of the bench that Tord currently I mean, that Grant currently has and that Tord will have after using Summoning Star, then that Raikou could be a very easy response to the Stoutland. So Tord really needs to deal with this Raikou 
and combining that KO with a Marnie, I think, would be his best possible play right here. Looks like we also see the Dunsparce Sparse in hand, so that adds to the levels here as Tord has to make the decision of, uh, if I do, Marnie, is that going to be enough to prevent the Raikou co from coming back? I mean, it's it's really just a Clara away from uh, revisiting here and uh, with a Mirage Gate as well, so uh, perhaps the Dunsparce does need to be played on a turn like this, uh, even though that does open up some avenues for Sableye to start to get aggressive as we see that the Lost Zone is at 7 and 3 isn't too far to reach. Exactly, and there's also a lot of mind games happening here because even though the Marnie does deny a lot of resources from Grant, he does have a bunch of cards in his hand. It actually, because these decks don't play any shuffle draw or any way to find cards, then you don't know if that Marnie is taking away the key card or actually getting Grant closer to it. Yeah, that's a, a great point. We also see this Collapse Stadium, which could be uh, a little bit awkward here, going to reduce the damage that uh, a Raikou would be able to deal anyways if it were to come back. And also, just uh, removing one of those comb phase, we've seen that when a Marnie is played, sometimes you have to use multiple switching effects between two comb phase. And if you only have one, that leads to maybe having to uh, rely a little more on the Radiant Greninja than you'd like or the Oringaru. Yeah, that Collapse Stadium can be pretty detrimental to Grant at any given point, but that Comfe is usually going to be the target for him to um, discard. You do have access to a lot of Comfe's at this point, even though you do want to go through your deck pretty quickly. Um, there, that's not the biggest priority. Grant's well. biggest priority right now is to be able to respond effectively to this Lugia and what he needs is a way to recover it, the Raikou and a way to power it up. Well, looks like we are going to see the evolution in sense of grabbing uh, an additional card here, the Lugia V-Star. No real way to play that just yet, so have to assume that this is leading into some thinning for a Marnie uh, that could be happening pretty shortly. Tord is still going to have to make that decision on if the Dunsparce is impactful or if uh, he can forego this. Yeah, the big thing with the Collapse Stadium and the Dunsparce is that if Grant somehow did have a way to take down that Lugia, then Tord wouldn't immediately have an answer to whatever Grant did use. That means that Tord would have to find either one of the Capture Energies, one of the Quick Balls, or one of the Ultra Balls to find his next attacker, unless he chose to use an Archives, which would contain a risk in and of itself. Tord deciding to value the Quick Ball here. Going to leave that on the top of the deck before the Marnie. And we've spoken so often about this. Players just wanting to have as many options as possible. Uh, leaving that opportunity to search for whatever, even if it is the Dunsparce at some point. Uh, don't put the Dunsparce there. Go ahead and just leave a Quick Ball. And you'll be able to find that or uh, potentially a different attacker if uh, your, your avenue to victory does change. Exactly. As long as that Quick Ball is a Quick Ball, that means it can become Dunsparce or it can become an attacker. Once that Quick Ball does get played, then you can no longer choose. And you don't know exactly how Grant is going to respond to this, but you do know that you are knocking out the Lightning Pokemon right now. And you see at the very top of the Lost Zone an Ordinary Rod, which is one of the ways that Grant could recover that card. So toward more preoccupied with the bench space, with setting up another attacker as a follow-up of the capture energy, or no, perhaps he just wants to keep that bench space open for now. We see the uh, Archeop is going to be the recipient of that capture energy. Could lead into a speed wing at some point. We've seen that as a attacker against some of these one prize Pokemon. But also just having that retreat option available and knowing that if you did want to extend with multiple energies uh, from Primal Turbo, you have the ability to do just that as you already have a retreater established. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to pivot into the right attacker, as you say, right, Kyle. <laughs> um, we're going to see... Grant, promote this Comfe, start using Flower Selecting, see what choices he gets, hopefully an easier one, but not exactly the Lightning Energy. He does have access to the other one, but it does give him a little bit of a pause. Grant thinks he might need the, the Mana Fee. <laughs> we, we know that it's not necessarily the, uh, the best card here. Yeah, Grant still without the full confirmation that Tord does not, in fact, have a Raikou in his deck list. I, yeah, I thought I had missed it myself, but seems like Tord uh, 
did mention at some point that you have to choose between Stoutland or Raikou, and we've seen a lot of players with Raikou. I feel like the majority probably have the Raikou, but that is not the case for Tord. Well, the second energy onto the Kompe, but no worries there. It finds the Raikou off of that ordinary rod, and the Mirage Gate is ready to go. The energies as well. We see the water and the lightning attached there, and that means that Raikou is ready to lightning Rondu one more time, and uh, the Dunsparce not being played could be pretty impactful now. Yeah, Tord may be underestimating the potential of Grant's deck and the reach it has, seeing that Ordinary Rod might at the top of the Lost Zone might have given him a little bit of a foul sense of security. Tord did have the Tonsparts in his hand, also kept the Quick Ball after the Marnie, and also attached the Capture Energy, so that was three instances where Tord could have chosen to bench the Tonsparts, but he did not. Yeah, we see the fleet footed synergizes very well with this deck. Just keep drawing cards. Try to try to thin the deck down as much as possible. Eventually you can leave yourself with an opportunity where your deck is just energy cards and you can perform some pretty incredible attacks like that Aqua Storm. But we're not focused on that right now. Lightning Rondo taking a big knockout here. Two more prize cards for Grant Manley as he leads the prize exchange here in game number two in the top four. I feel like I'm going to be leaving Sao Paulo without seeing that Aqua Storm at all <laughs> <laughs> live on Twitch, which just makes me very sad. But now we're going to see how Tord responds to this. I figure the Eveltal or the Charizard could be the responses here. It has access to both, I believe. But it's going to come down to Tord knocks out this Raikou, puts himself at two prizes if Grant is able to utilize Sableye to pick off that Oranguru or uses Cramorant to take out the Eveltal. He'll be a one price card and Tord will need to utilize the Stoutland in order to close out this match. Yeah, that's a great point. Still has plenty of reach. We are going to see a lot of those energies, however, likely being uh, committed here to the Eveltal to take a big knockout. And that leads into this energy attachment from the previous turn. Just having the retreat available means that you can start to think about a uh, Pokemon that would require a uh, five energy cost attack. Indeed. And I don't, I can't really tell from this angle if Grant has or how many cards he has left, but if Tord once again underestimates the potential of Grant's deck or the reach of Grant's deck and doesn't protect his bench with the mana fee, that could lead to Grant closing out the game with Aquastorm. That's that's what I'm waiting for. It's it's getting closer as we see that there are two targets that would only require uh, a, a three energies, I believe, to be discarded in that way to close out the game here. So uh, maybe we will see something found off this quick ball to, to help in an instance like that. Yeah, this is where the quick ball will show its value. That one card that Tord kept around for that Marnie, but I think he's still in a little bit of trouble now. Grant could, like I said, target down the Mana Feet, target down the Sableye with, uh, the Orangru, sorry, with Sableye, and it's on toward to find the Stoutland and power it up enough to take the KO. Looks like Tord has done his job at this point, making sure to preserve the powerful energies as best as possible, using all of these other energies to take the knockout here and uh, stay in the prize exchange. Uh, should be a two to two prize uh, game here in game number two. And Tord did a great job of making this only one prize available for Grant on this turn. Uh, Tord will have at least one more turn to, to figure things out. And Stoutland lines up very well with that. Yeah, Stoutland is certainly the Pokemon that Tord is eyeing up. We know Grant does not have any way to attack Tord's hand. And he is holding both the Stoutland and the boss's order. So even if Grant figured out that Stoutland was a threat and somehow managed to power up Raikou for a third turn in a row in order to have the highest HP Pokemon available, then putting Stoutland out of um, out of use, Grant Tord could still use Radiant Charizard to take the final KO or could simply go boss plus Stoutland. So Tord having all these options in hand and I don't think Grant can do anything about it. Yeah, uh, Grant basically has this opportunity to just remove the Evital from play. We see the Cramorant can, of course, just take the knockout there with Spit innocently at this stage. But uh, Tord, if he has all of the cards available, should be able to find the Stoutland. And uh, just one gusting effect really would be able to uh, avoid this if all four powerful energies weren't available. I am curious to see if Tord has the reach. 
Yeah, I have to wonder. The big thing, I think, could be retreating for Tord if he has an energy in his hand to attach to the Archives. I do believe I see an Aurora energy right there, and that would be enough to access all four powerful and power of Stoutland to not even need the boss and just take down this Cramorant. Grant fluttered the discard pile for us. I don't believe I saw a powerful energy in the discard pile for Tord, so uh, that uh, that is pretty incredible that uh, we've gotten to this stage of the game and uh, we, we have not seen that. I know, what are the chances for that? Now, Grant's still figuring out exactly what he wants to do this turn. He has a bunch of options, though the Cramorant seems to be the most likely one. He does have the Clara, he does have Mirage Gate, he does have a bunch of options, but the question is, are any of those good enough? We will have to see so many choices here, but which one gets you closer to victory? The, the, the real route that we saw was just was basically closed down by that Manaphy. It's it, another perfect timing there from Tord. Last time it was a little easier as the prize cards told you when to play the Manaphy, and sure enough, found a great time to play it down here. Before Grant benched that Snorlax, I was thinking maybe he could try to use Sableye, ping two different Pokemon without KOing them, and then using Sableye once again to close out that game because the Collapse Stadium would prevent Tord from benching a Stoutland, however. Now that we see the Snorlax getting powered up, the Snorlax is the heftiest Pokemon that's not worth two prizes that Grant does have in order to prevent the Stoutland from taking a KO, but we know that Tord is holding that boss's orders. Yep, Grant just playing to his outs at this point, trying to find a way to stick around and avoid being knocked out by a card like that Stoutland. You see that he's holding on to the Lost Vacuum, which could have been a way to maybe uh, mess around with the Collapse Stadium, but I think that's uh, potentially hindering Tord a little more than Grant at this stage. Wondering now why Grant promoted the Cramorant as we do see a Valve VIP pass off the top. If he had been able to promote that Comfy, he would be able to flower selecting this um, this turn and retreat into the Snorlax with the Clara finding that last energy to attack with Snorlax. But now if he commits the energy attachment from Clara onto the active to retreat, then the Snorlax will not be able to attack. It's like Grant just looking to uh, take a take the risk here in this spot, or, or maybe we did miss one of those powerful energies. Yeah, maybe Tord doesn't have access to all those powerful energies that he would like. We're trying to figure that out right now, but I really wonder what is Grant's plan here? It was not the Snorlax, it wasn't the Sableye, it wasn't the Raikou. He can't attack with any of them now. So we'll have to see what he ends up doing. Yeah, the, the Sableye play seemed to line up fairly nicely, but this is just going to be a knockout with Spit innocently on the with the Cramorant there. Grant going down to just one prize card toward looking to eye up two. We see the Stoutland V coming down into play. Powerful energy being rotated to the top of the hand. Archeops going to go ahead and look through the deck with the one. Primal Turbo. Looks like we see the two powerful energies there. Is the rest in there? It looks like we do see number four. So it looks like we should just have to, yeah, that's going to be just about it there. We see the powerful energy and the boss's orders. That's going to be enough here to close things out uh, against Grant Manley. Just going to show how this was done. This could easily be finished with the uh, Rangaroo. And sure enough, Tord Reklev going to be closing things out here in uh, the final match we have here of day number two. Moving on to the championships here in Latin America. Indeed, congratulations to Tord, congratulations to Grant as well. He put up quite the fight, but having no hand disruption in his deck ended up being fatal for him. He couldn't have a way to stop Tord from benching the mana if he had the right time, benching potentially the Thunspurs if he wanted to, which Tord was so confident he didn't even want to use the Thunspurs at that point. And no way to stop that stout land from closing out the game. It's, it's pretty unbelievable to how just one Pokemon that's really never seen play just completely turns uh, this deck that Grant has had so much success with into just a Raikou deck. That's really the only thing that he was able to, to find knockouts with. And 
had to just continually recycle this Pokemon by way of Clara and Ordinary Rod and to try to get an advantage, was able to take the opening prize cards in game number two, but uh, this deck just proved to be a little too much here as Stoutland was able to take a huge double prize knockout. Yeah, people will ask, like, well, what's so special about Torch play with Lugia? What's so special about his list? Well, it's generally the fact that Torch deck is doing what it wants to do a little bit more consistently, a little bit more often than the other Lugia decks. Or capture energies are great, or research are great, and he's able to find the cards he needs when he needs them. Yeah, he just wants to do the thing, and he, he does the thing so well. It's and led him to the championship once more, and... Uh, has this opportunity now to uh, be crowned the uh, Latin American international champion. Of course, going to have to be uh, defeating Lucas Calza in the finals, uh, the player from Italy who was a 9-0 and player in day number one. Uh, had a, a rougher go of things in day two, but when, when you start that strong, you're probably going to make day, uh, top eight anyways. Yeah, absolutely. Starting off so strong means you have that room for error, right? You don't need everything to go your way as opposed to when you go in with 19 points. You have absolutely no margin for error. No misplays, no 